especially even at my church i sometimes see like insecurity like that's the biggest thing i'm like you want to be confident in who you are yeah. i see everybody kind of put up front yeah but i feel like god's kind of set me apart to be able to see and help others then maybe not many people see what i see and so sometimes it may seem like i'm outcasted and sometimes that even me i struggle with sometimes with being like lonely but i just i know god's always there for me so i mean maybe i don't have a ton of friends friends but I always know I got God right there with me. All right. Welcome, everyone, to the Uncommon Human Podcast with Fit to Serve Fitness. We have a great guest, amazing youth that uh, I ran into, and he's amazing with his faith and his fitness. And uh, we have Noah Casper here today. And uh, we've been walking with uh, Dr. Petrick and uh, paving the pavement for his campaign on Thursdays. That's been lots of fun and just been uh, just learning more about Noah. And yesterday we got to break bread. We did a little communion. He got to open up the word and he broke uh, broke down reading some scripture. And um, that was awesome. And just learning more about Casper here um, on our walks. It's been awesome and, and just um, amazing to hear his testimony. I want him to share a little bit about you know, he's in 10th grade, and just to see the maturity of, of his walk in Christ. So, hey, Noah, welcome, man. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Just enjoying life. Yeah? How was your day today? Uh, really good. I went to my favorite Bible study. Cool, man. I usually don't get to go because of school, so. Yeah? Awesome. Well, what I want to do for the listeners here, I want to, let's go back a little bit. Like, uh, tell me a little bit about your story, how you grew up, um, where, where, where were you born and raised, and, and all that, and how did you come to where you are at uh, in, in your faith with Christ, and maybe a little bit of the sport background as well. Just kind of like, let's start back, how many siblings you have, your mother and father, and just let's, let's roll with it. You just uh, let me know. All right, so... Um... I was basically born and raised here in Vegas. Uh, I've been doing sports all my life. I actually never started in wrestling. I started out doing basketball, baseball, soccer, every sport you can imagine. Uh huh. But I found a love for wrestling. It was I um I wrestled in third grade. Enjoyed it, but then I was like, man, Dad, I want to play baseball. Yeah. And then he's like, "You're 10 years old, and you want to play baseball? Like, there's been so many, there's so many other people playing baseball already." Yeah. So then I did that for a while until COVID. And then when COVID happened, I went into middle school at Faith Lutheran. Okay. And I uh, I joined the wrestling team, and it relit a spark. And I've just rolled with it. And now I'm in 10th grade, and this year I started varsity, so. Wow, that's cool, man. Uh, so when, when you said it lit a fire, when, when was that the, the first time you accepted Christ? Um, so I've always had Christ in my life. Uh-huh. Like, since, like, really young, I grew up in the church. Yep. But always going through adversity, I mean, that up and down road with God, I mean. I wouldn't say I really fully got in with God till like this past summer. Tell me a little bit about the adversity. What? What? Tell me a little bit about that. Um. So, just starting with injuries. Okay. My eighth grade season, beginning of preseason, I broke my collarbone. Yes. And I was I was out for a while. I missed my whole season, eighth grade year. And then I um. I wrestled state, but I wasn't fully healthy. So I took six in state my eighth grade year. And then going into as a freshman as a high, on high school, okay. I did a preseason tournament, and I got a, my first concussion. And that, wow. that put me out a while. Wow. And then I come back midseason. You, you got the concussion. Freshman year. You got the concussion on the mat, wrestling or outside? Uh, wrestling actually at a tournament preseason. It was a national tournament here in Vegas. Okay. For, for, for those... So, you know, I got a really... For the viewers who don't know so much about a concussion and how that works, uh, run, it, run us through 
how, how that took place. What, what, how did the concussion happen here? So basically, I was cutting a lot of weight to make a certain weight class. Okay. And I didn't know kind of a proper way to do it yet. So when you dehydrate your body, it takes the fluid from your brain. So I had less fluid in my brain. Okay. So I got I got struck by, and the whiplash actually, my brain hit my skull, and that's what gave me the concussion. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So then what happens after that? Uh, after that, I go see a sports medicine doctor, do a ton of therapy, which I never knew concussions have therapy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I got back mid-season my freshman year. First tournament back, my coach put me at JV. He's like, I would want, I would want to put you on varsity, but he's like, I want to get you warmed up. And then I faced a varsity kid that sandbagged down to JV. And I got slammed on my head, like totally illegal move, everything like that. So then I was out for the rest of the season. I got cleared probably like January. And season usually ends about February. So I was like, I'll just practice with the team and everything like that. But then when I got back to practice, I had a little accident in practice where somebody landed on me. Wow. And I got a third concussion in my freshman season. Wow. And I just remember when I went to the trainer at school and she was just like, man, you got a third concussion. And I had to go talk to my coach. And I just remember bawling my eyes out to my coach. Like, it's just the end of my wrestling career. Yeah. And that's actually when I got introduced to John Petrick. Okay. And I went to his uh, his doctor's office, and the stuff he does there, man, it works miracles. That's so cool. Yeah. Because I mean, how I felt better get, with him. How did day. you get introduced to Doctor John? So um, his daughter goes to my school. She's one of our managers for our wrestling team. Okay. So when I got hurt, she's just like, "You should go see my dad. He'll he'll be able to fix you up real quick." And, and, and that's all it took, right? Oh, yeah. I was just like, as, as quickly as I can get back to that mat, I'm getting back to that mat, so. Yeah. What weight class were you wrestling at? So, eighth grade year, I wrestled 112 at state. Okay. Then last, my freshman year, I wrestled 113s. And then this year, I wrestled 113s again. Okay. Except for this year was a bit different, uh huh. Because uh, I started the season out at 126. Wow. For most wrestlers that know their high school weight classes, that's two weight classes higher than 113. Wow. Uh, wh how many weight classes do usually people walk around like before season? Uh, some people get pretty heavy. I mean, do they? For me, I wrestled 113, and over summer I got all the way up to like 140. 140, man. Huh? That's a big cut. Yeah. It's just no, all progressive. Yeah, yeah. You, you you start to understand the water intake and how to flush your body and get ready right before right before your meet, right? Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So so we talked about this fire that was relit. When was that again? When when did that take place? You knew Christ your whole life, grown up in the church. Um Tell me about the this fire lit up for for the Lord. Tell me, um, describe a little bit about that. Um, so when COVID hit in seventh, I was in seventh grade when COVID hit. Okay. And everything got shut down. Wrestling, everything. Yeah. And so I got in like a dark place and everything like that. But then when stuff started opening back up, I got back to church. And then I got baptized, but I didn't think, I didn't know exactly what baptism meant at that time. Mm. For me, I took it as everything's going to be fine after it. Yeah. Just like everything. I'm like, and so then I, I kind of fell back down a path and I struggled with it for a while. And it, it actually took until this following summer to realize what my path is 
and I actually got rebaptized this summer because, and now I'm fully ready to embark on what God has for me. Wow. And so since the summer, how, how has that been looking with the things that you're doing for the Lord right now? Um, well, to say currently, I help out of my church. Okay. What church do you go to? I did. I go to the crossing. Okay. Crossing. So, um, I help, I help beat out fourth grade boys every Sunday. I'm a small group leader for them. Okay. So that's a lot of fun. I love inspiring the, those little kids cause they're able to look up to me. Yeah. That's cool. And it helps so, that I'm not too much older than them. Yeah. That's neat. And, and so what are some of the things you, you get to do with them? Um, so they'll, they'll come in on church and they'll watch a message and everything like that. Okay. But then they come into my small group and we're able to dive deeper into the word and what the message meant and ask them questions. And they're all able to kind of relate to each other. That's it. That's neat. Um, and do, do uh, you have brothers, sisters? Yeah, I have a one younger brother. Okay. And he goes to Faith Lutheran too? Yeah, he's uh, in middle school. He's in seventh grade. He's in seventh grade. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So you guys have been going Faith Lutheran since junior high? Because is it yeah. junior high to high school, right? Is that? Yes. And then they also have an elementary school, but it's not affiliated with the middle school, high school. It's just like a kind of like a feeder school into the? Yeah. Okay. Awesome, man. Awesome. And so this fire is relit. Christ is, is, is just kind of showing you this new direction. You get to pour into the youngsters, the little, the little kids. And, um, yeah. and, and now what? What, what, what do you feel that the Lord is, is kind of directing you into do? Um, well, I think the Lord has directed me to help John out walk. Okay. Because how much he's helped me. And I, I almost feel obligated as a Christian to help another Christian guy. Yeah. Because we're, we're meant to do kingdom work. Yeah. And if we're not having Christian leaders as our, like, higher up leaders, we need that. Like, we really need that. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I mean, you're, you're in the thick of everything. I mean, obviously, you go to kind of a Christian school, right? That, that uh, yeah. ha has this Christian motto. And, um, but inside of that, just like inside churches, uh, you can find a lot of just uh, people that are just uh, have it as a as a staple of like, hey, I'm a Christian, right? <clears throat> and and yeah. you get to see all kinds of uh, craziness going on, right? What, what's some of the things that that you see now, um, like in the school district or with your friends or other or other people that you don't hang out with, which is kind of amazing. Um, I just think the fact that they brought God out of the schools. Okay. Like, I, it's, it should be a staple. Like, everything should be with God. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I feel like now everything's just kind of free and everyone's living their own flesh life and they're not really living for the spirit anymore. Yeah. And do you, do you find that with your peers right now at school? There's a lot of people kind of just chasing Oh, yeah. Even stuff. at... Even at my Christian school, I mean, yeah, not many people know what I'm doing, and like, it's hard for people to even follow that. Right. Give me an example. Give me an example of what some of the things that you do at school that people are just like, "What you're doing? What?" Right. Yeah. So I uh, I just got accepted in the Christ Academy in my school. Okay. So I'm going to be taking classes next year on theology and vocation, and I'm actually going to take the ministry path. That's cool. Yeah. And not, I mean, there's probably maybe 10 kids in that program. Yeah. And there's like 2,000 students. Wow. That's cool, man. And, and what yeah. are um, some of your friends saying about that, taking the theology path? Uh, they think I'm a little crazy. <laughs> yeah, 
they're they're just like that's an extra multiple classes you're gonna in your schedule. Don't you want a free schedule? Yeah. But I don't mind loading on my plate when it's for God. Hey Amen. Wow, that's so awesome. Yeah, I mean, it is. Uh, you guys probably don't see it as much, but the school districts, man, they are just, uh, it's crazy what they're doing with the kids, the teachers, like you said, taking God out, taking history away. Uh, there's just so much that um, of truth that is not being able to be spoken, right? And so you probably get to yeah. see this all the time, right? So tell me a little 100%. bit about, like, how. Tell me a little bit of the adversity piece where standing up for your faith, uh, like being challenged with that, even at school. Ha have you ever came in um, contact with, with that? I wouldn't say at school necessarily. Okay. But like I've had people question me like, how do you believe in a God that you can't see, feel, or like touch? Right. And I almost like to use the acronym like God's like wind. You can't necessarily see him or touch him, but you could always hear him. Mm. That's cool, man. That's awesome. What um in the theology class, what's the main mission and vision behind uh the class itself? Is it is it equipping uh the Christians in this the ministry that's vocational? Is it uh, equipping them for long-term vision outside uh, to go into ministry to, as a pastor, or is it just kind of like leaving it open to kind of wherever the Lord kind of leads you and just kind of prepping you um, in the staging of what, what happens next? Is it? So currently I'm taking a faith class, which is more of a general class for faith because they're required. So we learn about each like genre in the Bible and what they mean and the meanings behind verses and what the like the study notes mean and everything like that but then like next year i'm taking the theology of vocation and this class is really special they'll have pastors fly in from all across the country to speak to you and teach you about their ins and outs of being a pastor that's awesome yeah that's pretty cool do, do you feel the, the lord tugging on your heart to be a pastor uh, I would say the Lord wants me somewhere in ministry. I wouldn't necessarily say a pastor. Okay. I ne I would honestly want to do something not really in the church to help out with the church, but maybe a ministry along the lines of wrestling or coaching and something like that. Okay. So kind of using your, your platform and your sport, which, which you've done for some time, God's given you a skill set. And kind of utilizing that to uh, share Christ. Yeah, for sure. That's cool. Sh sh share with me, like, what does that look like? Like, I I'm sure you got to sit back and, like, hey, if 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 the Lord gave me this canvas to do this, it would look like this. What what is that? Um. So I believe in building my own Christian wrestling club when I get older. Okay. And I believe in. What's it matter if you're a good wrestler if you don't have good character? Okay. And you could build character through God. Mm. And I believe that I want to have a space where it's not only wrestling and a gym, place to work out, but there's also going to be meeting rooms for Bible studies to be held through the week by different people. So the people who are struggling could come there and be able to hear the word of God. Maybe not go straight to, maybe not be able to go to church, but they're able to go. They can just say they're going to wrestling practice, but they're able to learn about the Word of God. That's cool, man. That's awesome. Praise God. No, that's uh, that's neat. And you see more and more athletes nowadays are that are using their their faith um, and using their sport as a platform to share their faith, right? And uh, yeah. speak out. And I, I think as we get to be more vocal about it, we, you don't realize how many people are wanting to share their faith. They're just kind of like on the edge of like trying to get it out. But then all it takes is one person just like, I stand for God. Who's with me? Yeah. Boom. And then you guys just march like soldiers, man. Right. Um, I would say like my biggest inspiration is uh, Aaron Brooks and David Carr. They're NCAA wrestlers. Okay. And they both won national championships this year. 
Yep. And they they wear a headband that says 100% Jesus. And right after they walk off the mat and they're getting interviewed, they, they say, all glory to God. I couldn't have done this without God. Wow. And that's the first thing they say. They don't thank any coaches or family, nothing. They give all glory to God. That's awesome. And that's how it should be, right? Oh, yeah, it should In be. all that we do, eat or drink, give him the glory. Yep. That's so cool. That's so cool. Um, so tell me a little bit about your, your, your devotion time with Christ. Like, what does that look like, you know, as a 10th grader? You know, do, do you get to spend time in the Word daily? Oh, yeah. I, right. um, every morning. Okay. Right tell when I about, wake up. Tell, tell me about that. When do you wake up? What's your routine? I'll wake up around 6-ish. Okay. And um, I log into my Bible app. I have the I read the verse of the day. I read um me and my friend have a plan that we did together. And then I just end in gratitude and prayer before I do anything else in my day and I feel so much better. That's so cool. That's awesome, man. Um Wow, I know in tenth grade where I was, I was just not I was chasing sports. It was sports without God. <laughs> and so it was like, you know, I, I'm going to do everything I can, and I know I'm going to be a professional tennis player, so it doesn't matter what happens. And so that went out of the, you know, that was a pie in the sky, you know, but it just put all my eggs in that one basket. And sometimes it takes us, you know, hit our head a couple of times against the wall and then get uh, woken up to like, no, you need God, right? And so, yeah. uh, you know, you see a lot of athletes that, 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 they utilize their talents like that and they they kind of push everything to the side and it's just nothing but sports but without god i mean looking back man i wish i had christ so seeing you know you're an athlete and has it have an opportunity to have christ as a center and just you know i think being an athlete and having christ in the center it, losses don't meet in the same right because it's you no. know people <laughs> right explain about that because those who are not christian you probably experience on your team when they take losses, man. They're like beat up, right? Like they can't believe yeah. like, the world's coming down on them. And and us with Christ, we just can say, well, you know what? We're going to have joy through our trials because that's what God, you know, he went through so much more. Just look, we're in Holy Week, right? Like what did he do on the yeah. cross for us? I mean, come on. Like that beating, that wrestling, <laughs> he wrestled with the cross and hanging on the cross for you know, six hours, that, not that he had to, but love kept him on there. He could have yanked himself off at any time, you know, it was, and so that humility, I think, as an athlete, if you can be that humble servant as an athlete and learn that at an early age, uh, wow, because you're such in a contact sport, you're wrestling, you're flipping, and, you know, it's all about beating, that, having this aggression, but to flip it around and, and, and be that humble leader and, and have the love of Christ. So share a little bit about that. Like, because it's, it's, it's like, like a blood sport, right? Like it, it, in wrestling, it's like, man, I'm oh, going to take this guy down. I'm going to kill him. And, you know, it get very vulgar in the locker room and, and the losses and the competitiveness and, and leading up to the rivalry, right? Like, you know who you're going to challenge. These guys show up every year in the weight classes. Like, come on, I'm going to take him down this year, right? And, and it can yeah. just occupy that space, right? So share a little bit about that, like like what that looks like, you know, without Christ. And then how do you treat it now, you know, knowing that the Lord goes before you? Well, yeah, for instance, I mean, I went to state this year. Okay. And we had a couple guys on our team that fell just short like I did. Okay. But they come off the mat all upset. They're throwing their headgear, everything like that. I came off the mat. Maybe I was emotional. I lost a couple rounds out from placing. And everybody mm -hmm. wants to place in state. You don't go up to state just to lose. Right. But I, I came off the mat, and I remember hugging my coaches. And I'm just like, thank you guys for always having my back. And I really took a re – I really reflected. I actually left the arena and walked with my dad. And I'm just like – I thank God just for how far he's been able to take me. Like, it was a blessing for me to be able to come back on the mat and qualify for state as a sophomore. Wow. Wow. 
did any of your uh, friends question or ask you about, wow, man, bro, why aren't you, why aren't you so, you're not upset at all. You're not bitter. I, I mean, honestly, like they have asked me and I'm just like, at the end of the day, it's all, it's only a sport. Yeah. I mean, my identity is in Christ. And I mean, if, if that, if that's what I live for. I don't live to wrestle. I live for God. Yeah. Wow. That's powerful, man. That's it's powerful to, to, to be able to demonstrate that, you know, through your sport, not just talk about it, right? There's one thing saying it and saying, Hey, I live for Christ. I live for Christ wrestling or no wrestling. We're wrestling every single day with the enemy. We're in a, we're in a big oh, yeah. warfare battle. <laughs> so we're every day we're wrestling. We're giving in to the opponent or we're standing up victorious that because we're already victorious in uh, what we what Christ has done for us. So we walk from victory, not for victory. We already won the battle. We just have to show up. Yeah. We just have to show up and go take over what God has already given us. And it doesn't always mean a W, right? It, it, it can be something no. totally different that he has in store for you to wrestle or wrestle that person or be on that team with that one person who needs to hear the gospel, that needs to hear about him, that you get to share. and Share a little bit about you sharing Christ with maybe some people on your team. Um, I mean, for instance, I've shared this moment with my teammates. It's usually, I wouldn't want to call it a ritual because I don't think that's more spiritual, but it's something spiritual I do. Yeah. But every tournament I go to, I go to wherever the center of the mats are in the gym. And I get on my hands and knees and I pray. Hmm. I pray for my protection. I pray for my opponent's protection. I pray for everybody at the tournament. I'm just asking God's blessing to be over the tournament that if people do get hurt, it's only minor, everything like that. I just like, I make sure, I make sure to give thanks before I wrestle. Wow. That's very Because it's a journey just to get on the mat. Yes. Yes. And, and, and wow. And just having that, that contentment, right? Being content with, Lord, you brought me here. You've gotten me here. You're going to take care of me now. Let's lift this up. You know, let's not just look out my own yeah. concerns and being selfish. Let's look out for the opponent, the referees, the people in the stands. I mean... Crazy things go out at sporting events, right? Oh, yeah. I've Even seen the fans get hurt, right? Tournament. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. So that's, man, that's very um, mature in your walk to be able to, you know, in that moment, moment to be able to, to give God glory and, 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 and be in prayer, an attitude of prayer when this adrenaline and the hype and everything is going on. And... <clears throat> It's easy to be ashamed of the gospel when, when, when all the lights are on, right? Yeah. And I mean, for instance, the preparation behind it, what nobody really sees is there's four or five days of two and a half hour practices. Yes. And then there's also making the weight and hopping on the scale before the tournament. And that's all before even wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you that's can right. get hurt in the practice room. It's happened to me. That's right. Wow. And man, what a, what a beautiful picture of a sport of like what people don't see behind the scenes of all the prep time, the quiet time, the boring work, the stuff where it, it kind of sucks, but you know you're getting better because it's proven through the system of years of people taking that road and passing it on wisdom and wisdom and wisdom right and sharing this and i i believe it's a, a a great picture of our spiritual walk of 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 the preparation that people people don't realize of how much time we put in and how much quiet time we spend with god and then when it's time to perform like get on the mat in our spiritual walk that it wasn't you know the world can call it luck right no it was just god yeah. prepping you for that time for a season like this, it's not luck. It was the time that you have gone through and all the little falling down and getting up, falling down and getting up. And I think, you know, uh, sports plays a big part of learning how to be great at uh, 
not always doing the best, not always getting first place the way we might think we may win something. And like you said, we are all ready winning by just showing up by being there. Exactly. I mean, honestly, the amount of work, nobody wants to sit in a sauna for 45 minutes. <laughs> no one does. No, yeah. Or hop in a cold tub. Like, that yeah. stuff sucks. Yeah. The, the, the cold tub, man. I know I've been ice bathing. Uh, sorry, I, I shower and ice uh, cold plunge in our pool. Uh, probably 120 days or no, more than that, like 180 days. Haven't missed a day, but yeah. Uh, it's amazing as you get, you know, it's like anything. Like, yeah, it's horrible. One minute, you, then you go up to a minute and 30, then three minutes a day, and then you're like, wow, this is cool. The How great you feel in the recovery, right? I I remember doing this in college and used to run from the trainer because he's like, Daryl's Ario, come on, you got to get your hip flexor in there. I had to get my whole body in there because your hip flexor's up by your hip. I'm like, oh my gosh, all the, yeah. all the baseball players are just putting their elbows in, the wrist in, and I'm going to get my whole body in there. And I it was just like, oh, but the... But the uh, the recovery, like you're back at it, like like that. The inflammation's gone. You're able to just like spring back and play. And so I think the same attitude as plunging and, and sleeping and eating the right foods and repairing your body that you can go ahead and, and do the, the, the next day or be on the road or do a two a day, right? is the yeah. same way when we get beat up in our spiritual journey when we need to take let's take a step back and get refilled spiritually with Christ and and spend some alone time with him and get all the inflammation out right that's our cold plunge yeah. man he wants to recover us he wants to restore us he wants to bring us right back to 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 the center heart that what he wants for us in our life and you know I think a lot of times I know myself I'm speaking myself I don't do that enough Right. I don't do enough of the spiritual cold pledge in my life. Yeah. You know, I feel it like, so we do church camp yep. every summer and I've always been on fire after church camp. Yes. But the past couple of years, I let that fire burn out mm. where this past church camp, I'm still riding that fire. Mm. What do you think? has happened on the past church camps where you get burnt out. Tell me a little bit about that. What, um, why do you think kids, yourself, why does that fire kind of go out? For me, man, it's just the inner voice. It just, it tells you you can't, and sometimes you cave into it. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that's, that's what hap happens to me, like, it's almost like when the snake was in the garden and said, did God really say that? Yeah. And it's almost like the past years I've been able to fall for that. Did God really say that? Yeah. Or now I'm like, yes, God really did say that. Yeah. And now I'm following that path. Wow. That's cool. That's neat. And so, so what did you do different? Like you said, in this church camp, you're still riding away. What did you do different? Like coming down that, I mean, we always talk about coming down that mountaintop high, right? The mountaintop high, you're in the mountains, everything's gone, yeah. you know, no cell phones, no TV, disconnected from all the social media, all the stuff, right? And you're like, just with the Lord. And we always want to have that still, that mountaintop high when we come down. And we're always warned, man, the enemy's right there waiting for you, man. Just be ready. Oh, right? yeah. And we have to be in that battle. I remember us doing, um, my wife and I got the opportunity to serve uh, as um, youth leaders at Calvary Chapel Green Valley for, for 10 years. God had us there. I mean, from summer camps to winter camps to kids coming to our house. We had a thing called Frontline Friday. So it was all the kids who wanted to be on the front line in ministry. Like, they can be anywhere else on Friday nights, but they come to our house. We had 30, 50 kids, you know, just hanging out, Bible study, wow. jumping in the pool. Um, it's so amazing, right? So amazing. Those years of just seeing God, how he's equipped it, those, those years of like building up to the things that we get to do later on. And so what was that difference for you when you came off that mountaintop high this time? And how is the flame still going? Because it's been some time. Like how long ago was that when you came back from camp? June. Okay, so you got June. 
So um, they did something different. So usually we go up like a place up in the mountains and stuff like that. Okay. But this this year we went to a college campus, and it was it was in California. We stayed in dorms. Okay. And it was a retreat. There was different speakers every night, everything like that. It was really cool. But usually at the end of church camp, they, they have you stand up, like if you want to give up this and everything like that, which I, I've always been wanting to stand up, but there was never an action behind it. Mm. Where this year, they did something cool where they did, they brought out chains. And they're like, these are your burdens. And they have, they have you drop it. Wow. And the release you feel is out of this world. I couldn't even explain it. Wow. Like when I dropped, I dropped the chains this year. So everyone's I, on stage I, with the chains or you're sitting in the seats with chains. So they, they put up probably six chains around the whole gym. Okay. And if you felt called, you walk down to the chains. And they have leaders praying over you. Wow. And they say a specific they say a specific line. And they're like, and now now that stuff is set free. Now you can drop the chains. And then wow. you drop the chains. And then how free you feel after it. Wow. I I, I to just to describe it, I felt weightless. Hmm. I literally had friends having me carry me out of there because I gave up so many burdens. That's cool. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And God knows your heart, right? He knows as you... Well, he, know, he knows if you're giving everything up or not. Yeah. And yeah. that time I gave everything up. That's, yeah, that's awesome. Because, you know, in your, in your youth room, you see, you know, you see kids are always giving up the same thing every week or getting baptized every time, right? Like, it's so... <laughs> It's like, yeah. dude, how many times are you going to get rebaptized, right? Like, there's a, you need to baptize once. I mean, and so, but you see these kids coming back, they want to give up, give up, and they fall back, right, into these things. Us as adults, yeah. too, but I, I, I remember in, in, in youth camp that that's over 10 years, you know, we've just, we've seen this this cycle um, of the kids. The, the, the kids can't wait from junior high to get to the high school. They're like, oh my gosh, we're going to be in the high school ministry. This is going to be awesome, right? And you got the ones that are really seeking Christ, and the other ones are seeking other things, right? <laughs> Oh yeah. You yeah. see it everywhere. I mean, especially even in my church, I sometimes see like insecurity. Like that's the biggest thing. Okay. I'm like, you want to, you want to be confident in who you are. Yeah. I see everybody kind of put up fronts. Yeah. But I feel like God's kind of set me apart to be able to see and help others. Then maybe not many people see what I see. It's awesome. And so sometimes it may seem like I'm outcasted. And sometimes that, even me, I struggle sometimes with being like lonely mm. because of that. But I just, I know God's always there for me. So, I mean, maybe I don't have a ton of friend friends, but I always know I got God right there with me. Wow, that's neat. That's awesome. Well, you talk about friends. Um, do, you, do you have like a, a solid Christian bro that you can kind of hang out yeah. in, 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 in accountability and, and pray with? Oh yeah, he he keeps me accountable. I mean, he if I ask him, he'll text me every day, make checking in. Did you read your Bible today? Everything like that. So that's cool. Wow, listen to that, men and women. Listen to that. Those that are listening today. Yes, there it is. Checking in. Have you read your Bible? You know, that's a pointer for myself as well. You know, someone checking in on you. You know, in high school, these guys are doing that. I mean, here's Noah. He's he's doing it right. Like you're doing the hard stuff. You know, we're. We're doing the work that that uh, it is always glamorous and and being vulnerable and sharing some of those hard points that you're going through. Man, bro, I'm I'm, I'm struggling with this. Can you pray for me with this and this? And being able to be truthful and having someone really getting on their knees and praying for you. Man, prayer is so powerful, right? And if you have more people in your corner praying, wow, you you, you can't be stopped, right? God God God, God yeah. has a, a amazing amazing ministry for for all of us and uh and that's incredible that you have that um that accountability piece in your life yeah and i mean our church we do small groups and everything like that and they're right there to pray for you on anything you're struggling with that's great i mean i could i, I could give an example this week uh -huh. um 
I went for right before because we had to do service for middle school, and high school on Wednesdays. Yeah. And I found out that I got diagnosed with severe depression and anxiety. Okay. And no sooner do I go that night to church and they talk about mental health. And it was a message like God was speaking right to me. Wow. And then I got in with my small group after the message and I just talked to them about what I'm going through, what my mindset is and everything like that. And they're like, let's pray for you right now. And they just laid hands on me and prayed. It was the coolest moment ever. Wow. That, that's so neat. That's so neat. It's just a no questions asked. They just do it. Yeah. So you grew up with both your parents, right? Your father and your mother? Yeah. How, tell me a little bit about, because um, I didn't. I, uh, my, my parents divorced at an early age. Uh, but, but, but explain to me about your, the, the impact your father had like from, na- from you growing up till, t- till now, till today. Um, well, one of the things that helped is he never really had, like, he didn't put any other music on besides Christian music. Wow. Like, that's something he always does. Is like, it's only on Christian radio in his car. Okay. That's... And that, that's just, like, always reminding me that God's always there. Wow. And that's, like, the forefront. And it's just, like, I feel like other music's a distraction for me when I listen to other music, but then like, I almost feel a sense of peace when I listen to Christian music. Yes, yes. So that went on your whole life, right? You and your brother get to hear Christian music all the time. All the time. Wow. And then some of the things that you and your dad, some of the special things you guys uh, uh, get to do. Um, Well, uh, seventh grade, I joined a new wrestling club. Okay. And my dad came in for the first practice and he was watching. But knowing him, because he, he used to wrestle in high school. Okay. He started critiquing people that were doing stuff wrong and everything like that. <laughs> and a coach came up to him. Hey, man, you interested in coaching? Yeah. And my dad's like, yeah, what do I got to do? So he got his certifications, everything like that. And it was pretty cool having my dad in the wrestling room coaching. That's neat, huh? That's yeah, crazy. I was able to have my dad in my corner when I was wrestling. Wow. I think that was a big um, highlight in my life, too, having my, my dad as my coach growing up. Well, really introduced me to the game of tennis was, uh, was a huge, huge thing. And I, I think that's, uh, I think men and boys, they, they bond over sports, right? Um, oh, for sure. Um, so I've always, you know, that I, I remember those early days that introduced and still today. Um, sports plays a huge impact, um, even in the ministry today. So, uh, yeah, it's such a huge impact for fathers to be just just to be there and show up. I mean, sometimes you would take this for granted. I mean, you had your father there being actually your coach. That's so cool, right? And yeah, uh, that's and, really and cool. I'm sure you see fathers that aren't there. Tell me a little bit about that. You know that that aren't there for the, you know because you you probably had friends with no fathers or or fathers that are absent, right? Well, I I wouldn't say absent, but I do have a teammate that we're really good. Me and him are good friends, uh-huh. but his dad has severe cancer and he's like at home. So, and so his uh his mom takes care of him, and so both of them never make his wrestling. Wow. Mm. But he's kind of taken to my family. So now that my family's there, he feels like there's family there. That's great. That's awesome. Because I know it's been really hard for him that, like, he just got his license, but that's helped his parents out a lot. Wow. Wow. Because they haven't been able to do stuff. And how much does his dad want to go to see him wrestle, right? Oh, a lot. Oh, a lot. I, it, it's sad to see because his dad's struggling. Yeah. I mean, it's just... It's just a matter of time before he's he's taking his last last breath. Right. I mean, it's sad to see. Right. I mean, I've seen the ups and downs all year of times they thought he was going. and I mean, just being there as a friend to back him. I mean, I know there's practices where he'll walk in and he just needs, he needs to somebody to beat up that day. I mean, just get out all the emotions. Uh, such a big weight, right? 
Oh, yeah, big time. And I mean, sometimes, like, maybe it sucks I'm getting my butt kicked by him, but he needs to get out that emotion. Like, that's someone needs a way to release. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I think it's a, uh, it is. I know it, it, for me, it was a big release of other stuff that I was holding in as well. A lot of anger, a lot of stuff that I went through as a, as a kid. Uh, sports was a big release. And I know for a lot of people, it's a big release. Uh, and so, yeah, those are, um, those are battles, right? But what an awesome time where you get to show up as a, a brother in Christ and be there for him, pray for him. Yeah. And now taking him in as, as, as a brother, right? Like a, a family. That's really cool. Really cool. I mean, it's, it, I mean, it's, it, our only goal here on life is to be able to inspire others to talk about God. Yes. Because that's our mission. I mean, if we're not doing anything else, then what are we doing on this earth? We're meant to spread the word of God. It's not for us to keep to ourselves. Right. Yeah, the talents, right? Not burying the talents. Being able to share, multiply, share them with others, pour into other people, pass it on and pour into people what Christ has poured into you and not to let it go to waste, right? And so I know that's a big staple piece in my life as well through through Fit to Serve Ministry. So, man, that is, that is so cool. Uh, yeah, you can take it for granted having your parents, but you are blessed to have your parents, um, you know, together. You know, that, that seems weird to, to not have parents together. I mean, for most people, it's not weird anymore because there's so many divorce, divorces right through throughout our our country. There's so many single family parents. There's so many kids with with a father like living outside the home or a mother living outside the home. Um, but just that alone, that's a huge blessing. And being able to be raised up in a godly home with both parents, and then your heavenly Father pouring into you and coming home and loving parents to love on you. You know, yeah. yeah. Share a little bit about that. I mean, just just to say to, just others, to say to others, I mean, yeah, I grew, yeah, up, I grew up in a fully Christian home. I had both my parents in the house. Doesn't mean doesn't the flesh and the sin get any easier. That absolutely. Some people look at some people some people look at Christianity like all oh, they just have it easy. No. No, sin hits us just as hard. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. What, what good wisdom there. Yes, absolutely. You know, and, and we all, we, there's always something that we live at as a de deficit, even if, you know, we have both parents together, right? Like there's a lot of things that you may not get to see through this other lens that you could have seen through. Right. And a lot of our, our stories are built through a lot more adversity, which you got to experience a lot of adversity through, you know, the concussions and, uh, the diagnosis of, of, uh, depression and all these things that we get to walk through just little speed bumps but you get to learn them and, yeah. and walk with Christ through them how much um, does the world take that stuff and more on without Christ right can you imagine dealing with this stuff without having Jesus I mean, I couldn't imagine, but I mean, I, w I wouldn't even call them speed bumps. I call them stepping stones. Because everything has a, a stairway to the final goal. And I mean, that final goal is meeting God in heaven. I mean, that's nothing you can work for. No. Not at all. I mean, but you could be good stewards of God's word. Yes. I mean, I can only imagine what other people think without having faith. Like, what, what are the, what's their perspective of afterlife? Yeah. Like, some people don't even know what, what, what happens to you after you live. They think, they think I'm just going to be buried in a hole six feet deep, and that's the end of my life. Um, they got a big awakening, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that's why we're out here spreading the word. Yeah. Would hate for any of the parish, right? Yeah, I mean, it says you don't remember anybody that doesn't know God in heaven. I mean, that can even be family members that you're very close Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Yeah, 
They could be the the ones that say they're Christian, and we just go, wait, I thought they were supposed to be here. Wait, how did you get here? Right? How did I didn't even know you're? You know, I mean, yeah. we're, we're going to be surprised either way. Like surprised that a person got there that we didn't think, and the surprise that that person isn't there, and probably surprised. Yeah, I mean, also I, I look- surprised that we're there. We're going, wow, I'm here. Praise God, right? Yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean, even when, I mean, even when times get tough, I mean, I look back at the verse when it says God, God says to you, well done, good and faithful mm-hmm. servant. And I just picture, and I just picture it in my mind because I'm very good at, I'm very, like I could have a really good imagine. And so I'm just like, what would that be like if God's saying that to me? Yeah. Well, done, well done, good and faithful servant. Wow. Welcome, well, welcome to heaven. Like, how cool would that be? Yes. You finished the fight. You finished the race. Fought the good fight, like Paul talked about, right? Yeah. That was it, yeah. man. He gave it his all, and and he knew. He Paul talked about to live for Christ, to die is gain. He said, right? Like if he died, it'd be a gain. But yeah. if he's gonna live, and God's gonna continue to let him live, he's gonna live for Christ. And that 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 short and simple, sweet verse is so amazing because that's that's how. When you you have an attitude to live that way, that there's no fear, there's no fear at all. That you're just it doesn't matter what happens. It's like man, it's gonna be gain for His glory. As long as I'm I'm doing what He wants me to do in the midst of that, this is this is a vapor, right? James talks about this this life that I always look at our tombstone. That's that dash mark on the tombstone from from born to past. What did you do in that that dash for Christ? And that short fear, I mean, you live 80, you live 90, you live 100. That's still nothing compared to eternity. A hundred, oh, right? Oh, no, they, they, should have, they should have a dash and then just a blank forever. And forever, yes, yes, amen. Man, it's uh, it's amazing. And the world, the world is uh, trying to bring us in into their little cubby right yeah and we just got to keep but what you you gotta you can't let them cover you they're gonna try to find ways to shut you down but you gotta stay motivated to keep going out there even through adversity because i mean when you're when you're a christian they're gonna try to shut you down they don't want they don't want your voice they don't want your voice at all yeah I've seen, seen many Christians be comfortable in the church, and, they, that's, and they, that's all. That's where they stop. Where you got to get out of that? I mean, you got to get out of the church too. But like, you can't just stay in the church because everyone's Christian there. You got to talk to the non-believers. Yeah, yeah. And everyone's good on Wednesday midweek and Sunday on church day, right? Like, hey, brother, love you, God bless. Let's go eat some donuts, right? Like, yeah. great. Yeah. But then, what do you do Monday through Saturday? Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean you got to talk. You got to talk to non-believers, and some of them get yelled at, curse you out. I mean, you got to be open to be going out there. Yeah. And and because maybe maybe they're upset at you at that time, but like, it's they'll they'll recognize what you said, and they can think about it later. Right. Amen. Yeah, it's the consistency, you know. It's it's easy to talk and boast about all the good Christianese things that we do, but but people are watching us. They're watching you. They're watching you. Some want you to succeed, and some want you to fail. Some are wa- watching uh, like every step. Is he going to match up to all these things that he's been telling us? Is he going to match up to all these words that he's been talking about this Christian stuff? Let's see. Oh, he slipped up there. Oh no, that wasn't right. And so we have to be on guard right have the lord be our front guard our rear guard we have to put the armor on we have to be armored up every single day it's a battle and so at your age my age no matter what age like you said they're trying to take us down and 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 in your school district i mean in in schools in general and as we get into college they're just taking everything out and trying to they're erase everything about our country erase everything about the christian founders of our country, the history of our country, what it was built on upon prayer and faith, godly men leading this country, and we see it trying to be totally, 
totally erased. What do you what do you say on that? I mean, are, are you seeing that as well? Oh yeah, big time. Oh yeah, big time. I just I, at the end of the day, we got to go back to our Christian values. I mean, what's the, I mean, what's the word of God say? That that that's what has power. Yes. I mean, this stuff may have power in this flesh realm, but at the end of the day, what's going to happen when we die? None of this is going to have power. That's right. Like, they may think they have power on this earth, but, like, there's so much life after death that we got to go back to the Word and the blood of Jesus. Like, that's where the truth is at. That's right. Absolutely. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And it's just crazy how people are deceived by it, like, Yep. Or people need to know about the blood of Jesus and the power behind it. Wow, that's so cool, man. Yeah, recently we just started this group at our at our gym. It's called SWAT, Sinners with a Testimony, and and Doc, Doc's in there, you know, and and man, I just the God just put a burden on, on, just like kind of what you said God did with you, you know, just a burden for men. Just man, there's not there's not many of us standing up and. And being God, no. good, have godly integrity, godly husbands, godly fathers, and um, sp- uh, sp- just just husbands to our wives, and and just being a uh, a good godly character man of of just being a man of His Word, and we're missing that, and so oh big time, oh, big time. so it's it's a good group, man, and and, and I'm just. It's just been a burden, and and I see that with you, you know your heart of having, you know that burden for for building up others and through your sport. So praise God that God is putting that, giving you that heart for making disciples, and being bold with your your faith. Well, I mean, I believe in leading by example. Because I mean, I can speak, but I mean, if I'm not doing it, then what, what's the what's the matter? That's right. That's right. Yeah, we can talk a lot, right? I've been a big talker in my past oh, yeah. and talk, 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 but God, God shut me up real quick and said, "Hey, go do." And so when you go and do and put into action, huh, it's a whole nother ball game. That's a whole nother sport. It's like wow, <laughs> you went from flag football to now like. Yeah full armor with pads and everything, right? And sometimes you forget your helmet at yeah. home and you're going head to head in the bull ring without your helmet. <laughs> you're like, here's concussion time, right? Big time. Big time. But, hey, if you're doing it and you don't have no pads on, no helmet, God's going to heal you, right? He's going to He's gonna say, go in there with no helmet oh, yeah. because I'm going to be able to protect you, you know? And it's like, that's crazy. But you know what? He does these crazy things in our lives he loves underdogs right he loves getting the glory and it's just to point to him just like in your story we get to point to him with your concussion through the depression through all these things that the world's saying no oh, stop wrestling stop doing this the doctors are like oh you, you you can't be on the team no more and you're just using it as your motivator right oh yeah I, oh yeah i want to i want to prove everybody wrong mm. the end of the day, it's me and god on this mission yeah. There's people guiding me. There's friends, family, everything like that. But at the end of the day, the person that's guiding this mission is God. God's guiding the mission, man. I mean, one of, one of my biggest things is um, God wrote your book. Don't take the pen. That's like my biggest thing I live by. I, I didn't get that last part. God wrote the book what? I said God wrote the book, so don't take the pen. Don't take the pen, yes. Amen. That's right. That's right. What a great, what a great visual that is. Well, man, it was awesome, bro. Hanging, chilling. We get to hang on Thursdays together and and walk the streets, man. Get to share a little bit of Jesus by, you know, a lot of times we get to share Jesus just with our, our attitude, our smile, our awareness of others, kind to others. You know, sometimes we don't have to shoot, shout from the rooftop and tell people they're sinners, but just even door knocking and passing out, you know, some flyers and talking about, you know, voting for truth, you know, so someone's who's going to stand up for, for what you guys believe in and what you really want. If you, you don't even know what you want, this is what you want, right? And uh, what a great, 
great um, platform to practice, to practice in the things that God's going to continue to build upon you because you need time under tension. I believe when you get you build strength, you have more time under that squat bar. It's not about lifting heavy weights that day. It's time and time and time under tension, which will build that strength over time. And so God's going to use you, bro. I'm excited what he's going to do in your life. And so... Oh, I'm excited too. Wow. Wow. Well, man, thanks for coming on, Noah. Um, Faith Lutheran, right? 10th grade. You're going into 11th next year. Yep. And man, we'll yep. be praying for you and uh, the journey what God has for you. So let me let me pray for you right now. Right. Let me pray. Dear right. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for Noah, Lord. Thank you for his heart for you, Jesus. And Lord, just his... Uh, just fire that is lit in this young man of God. Lord, will you continue to uh, keep his flame burning for you, Lord? Al allow him to be surrounded by godly men, Lord, to continue to, to do what you want him to do, that he's on your side. You don't have to, he's not wanting you to fit into his will, but we want to be in your will. So, Lord, protect him. Look over his family, Lord. Lord, we pray these this year and the next two years, whatever you have for him, that he would be, uh, ready and able and doing whatever is coming his way that you call him to do, that he would have the courage, the faith uh, to go do that. So Lord, we thank you for our brother. We praise you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Amen brother. Well, I'm sure we'll be doing this again, but we'll be chatting on the streets, man. All right. All right. Have a blessed night. Have a great Easter, Resurrection Sunday. Go share Jesus. Invite a invite a one, uh, maybe a, 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 a unchristian to your church or a friend this Sunday. I definitely, I definitely will. I got that man back. Wow, guys. praise God, brother. Grateful for you, man. We'll be chatting. God bless. All right, see ya. All right, see ya.